okay? And then when the United States Congress outlawed polygamy and said, you're going to go to jail for a long time if you do this, all of a sudden now the apostle in the Quorum of the Twelve said, God's telling us that really polygamy is not a good thing. See, and you're and 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 we have a guy. We have a guy as a Mormon who's running for president of the United States, and he follows this. You see what happens? That the power of God, if it's not taken away, it's mingled with other things, and you're not supposed to do that. The devil has taken away the power of God. Now I want to get something. You say, well, that's the cults. Yeah, I'm not in a cult. I go to such and such church. Let me tell you how else it's happening. Christian book publishers. Christian book publishers. Let me read you a verse of scripture. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. And I'm going to stop right here. This is in reference to the coming of the Antichrist. And Paul is warning Christians, don't let anybody deceive you by any means. Christian book distributing companies, bookstores all over the country. Even in other, I've been in Kenya and I went into a Christian bookstore there and it was loaded with false doctrines of every kind. Replacements for the Word of God. People say, well, you know, I don't really understand the Bible. But I read Purpose Driven Life, and boy, I got a lot out of that. Let me tell you something. The power that you're seeking for in your life will never, ever, in a million years, come from Rick Warren and 40 Days of Purpose, this or that or the other. It won't happen. You're try- you, have- you have let the devil talk you into that there is a valid replacement for daily Bible reading and study in your life. You've let the devil talk you. Oh no, I use these books as an ad- as an addition to the Word of God. See how it works? See how it works. Let no man deceive you by any means. The devil comes into the Christian... Think about it. If you were the devil, and at one time... Now, at one time, there were some good books being written by some good godly men that were based solely upon Scripture. It's not that way anymore. The devil decided, you know what? I got to get to, I got to get to these big guys at the publishing houses, and so he's gotten to Zondervan, and he's gotten to other companies that publish these books, and he's working from the top down. He's getting people to write. Roger Oakland, in his book Faith Undone, does an excellent job of exposing how this works. He's talking about these emergent church leaders and how how they were allowed to come in. Jude said certain men crept in unawares, and you. Have have these guys that have crept in and how did they do it they were commissioned by these book publishers to write books to get them into the hands of church members and pastors all over the country to draw them away from the pure doctrines where the power of God is to draw them away from the pure doctrines of the scriptures into seducing spirits and doctrines of devils that's how it's happened and then then it dawned on me a long time ago um, that maybe if the devil really wanted to do a good job, maybe he should get into the seminaries and the Bible colleges. You see, at one time, you had these colleges that were set up all over the place, and all the, all they had now was just a King James Bible, and they said, now, uh, here's, you know, Zechariah is about this, and Ezekiel is about this, and the Gospels were about this, and study this, and write reports on this, and, and, and go preach. That's what they used to do. But now the the seminaries, okay, and, and a lot of a lot I, you know, a lot of the research that I do on some of these latter day false prophets, you know where a lot of them showed up from? They showed up from Fuller Theological Seminary and others that are cranking out these. Here, here it is: you have a church, you have a local congregation where an old preacher is preaching an old Bible in there, and he's sowing the word. And so the Bible colleges send out these new young guys that have been trained differently and taught differently. And they've read a lot of other books other than the scriptures and gotten their ideas on theology and salvation and Bibleology. They've gotten their ideas not from the word of God but from old oh, Dr. So-and-so or, or this book over here. And then we turn these guys loose into the churches and they stand in front of the pulpits 
and they take away the word of God from these people. I've read. It, it, it don't don't try to don't try to say that I don't know what I'm talking about. I've read the preacher threads on on little preacher chat lines. One of the the the, be, the biggest items of discussion is when you go to a new church. How do you get the King James Bible out of that congregation? Can you believe that? Can you believe that men who were who come out of Bible colleges, who are supposedly called to preach by God, go to a new church and they need to figure out how in the world they can get the King James Bible out of that congregation and replace it with new translations? I'm not making this up. Okay? Satan will come and he will take away the word of God. And so here's how they do it. Let me get to, so number one, step number one, get people out of the King James Bible. So how do we do it? Uh, I'm reading from the New King James Bible. All it does is, it just, you know, doesn't say thee and thou. That's not all it does. They're lying to you. Then they'll send these guys in. And I have a book here called the Greek New Testament. Here's a, here's a picture of what it looks like. Now, I was uh, moderately well trained. I went to Bible college. Okay, I can read some of these words that are on this page. Kai eporuthesein ekestos aistan oikon atu. Okay, this is ekata yohanin. Okay, this is according to according to John, the Gospel of John, in the original Greek. The problem is, um, I don't I don't know what that says, and you don't either. You don't have a clue what it says. How how do you know what this says? You don't know. And so they send these guys down with Hebrew and with Greek languages, letters that you can't even read. And they send these guys down in there and say, now, you give them a lot of Greek. You give them the original manual. You give them original Greek. And here's what you do. Most of these people in your church now are going to have a King James Bible, and they've been reading that for years. But here's what happens. The young And see, I know this because I did it. I did exactly what I was encouraged to do. I went into a church and I said, now the original Greek says he, this and the original Greek says that. You know, why I, you know why I wanted to do that? I wanted those church people to know that I was smarter than they were. They were just a bunch of old farmers and, and uh, workers and this and that. And I was Bible college trained. I wanted them to think that I was smarter than they were. So I was original Greek this and original Greek that. And they all had their Bibles and they were going... Well, it says right here, and I'd say, no, no, in the original languages, here's what it really says. You know what I just did? I just took away the word out of their life and out of their heart. I took it away. I replaced it with something, but it's something, they don't have a clue what this is. They don't have a clue what this says. Okay? So that's that's how it's done. You say, well, well... It's the original languages, yeah. Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. I know all about that. Can I tell you, can I show you, remember, God be true and every man a liar. Okay? Can, can I show you from the Word of God what it says here about how people are supposed to hear the gospel? Acts chapter 2 verse 7. At the very beginning of the church, I mean right off the bat, before God does anything else, Here's what God does with the Christian church. They were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our tongue wherein we were born? You see, you know what they were doing? They were speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What were they doing? They were speaking in not just Hebrew and not just Greek. They were speaking in the languages that these people were born into. Languages that they knew very, very well. You see, you might study a little Greek. You might even get you a little concordance and, and uh, look up words every now and then. So, well, I guess that's what it means. How do you know the concordance is telling the truth? And these guys come out of Bible colleges and seminaries and give people all the... And they say, well, now in your, in your Bible it says this. But let, let me tell you what the real... Let me tell you what the real Word of God says. And in that person's mind, they're either going to have to say, you know what, I reject that because I know what this says. Or they say, oh, oh, so it doesn't say this. See how it works? They've taken away the word of God. Isaiah 28 verse 11. God himself said, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. And, and, and all over.
over the place in churches everywhere. The official line of the churches is, well, I believe in the Bible in the original languages. But God said that he was going to speak in other tongues. Go read 1 Corinthians 14 because when Paul quoted Isaiah 28, 11, he said, for with men of other lips and other tongues will he speak to this people. God intends to speak to us in this language right here. And it's sort of like this Hebrew and this Greek here. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 9. Let me, let me tell you where it comes from. Stay yourselves in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken but not with wine. They stagger but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Let me stop right here. Remember what Delilah caused to have Samson do. She caused him to sleep upon her knees. And right here, the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes and the prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. Verse 11, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. In verse 13, the Bible says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me. That's, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like all the praise and worship services going on in every church. Yeah, you go in there, and yeah, they got good music. And I'm, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Okay, The music, remember it's got to be, have a replacement. The music has become a replacement for the Word of God. And so he says, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the what? Precept of men. Whereas, whereas, this Bible will tell you that number one, the words of the Lord are pure words. That it was the inspired word of God. That it's the preserved word of God. That it was translated in languages that you and I understand. Whereas, that's what this Bible says. These guys coming out of the big universities and the seminaries are saying, now, really, there's no way that you can know what this, but you can read it. But you can't really know what this book says. Only those who get into the original language. You know what that, you know what that came from? That came from the Vatican. The Vatican refused to let any, any priest in the church read the scriptures other than in Latin for years. You know why? Oh, it's not for the profane people to know what the Holy Scripture says. See? See where the doctrines come from? Are you going to believe men? Or are you going to believe God? Let me show you another way. Let me show you another way that they replace the Word of God. I have here a Bible that I bought for my wife back when I was ignorant. Okay? It's a New International Version, Life Application Bible. And I can see what it is right here. Okay? There's Bible written up here, or something that looks like Bible, CNIV. And then down here, it's got all these big notes on here and all these little commentaries. You see, that's that's something you hear. You, when you, you just listen to preachers preach nowadays. Okay? You listen to them preach. Those who want to even sound spiritual, they'll say, now, Dr. So-and-so said this, and, and uh, according to such and such in his commentary on the, on the book of Romans it says this and we have pastors who will spend all week long studying and reading commentaries one commentary after another trying to find out you know maybe this says maybe I can get a new angle on this you see it's all about the pastor trying to look better and smarter than his congregation and he knows that most people in this congregation have not been to Bible college they don't know how to read Greek and they don't have 20 commentaries in their library and so he, he may not be equal. He may be equal to them when it comes to just reading the Bible, but he's got them because he can throw commentary after commentary after commentary. And you know what? Commentaries were written by men. God, God actually wrote a commentary. You know what it's called? The Bible. The Bible is the commentary. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 actually tells you how to study and understand the Bible. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Now, the guys who publish stuff like this want you to believe that you're to compare the Scripture 
with their notes. 